Hi, fifth graders. Welcome to week eight of spelling. This week, we're going to talk about syllables with R controlled vowels. So whenever an R comes after a vowel, it controls the sound of that vowel because the R is such a strong sound. So if, a, for example, if you just said the word race, I'm going to race you to the end of the block. The R doesn't control anything. So starting, it's at the beginning of the word. So we just say the R sound followed by the long A followed by the S sound, race. But if you put that same R after a vowel, like in the word, even the little word or, or that O, which is the long sound is O and the short sound is A, like the cat is on the chair, it changes it dramatically. Listen to that or. It's almost like all you can really hear is the R with a little bit of an inf um, a little bit of a change of sound at the beginning. So think about A R is R, O R is or. Er, er, er for E R I R U R. So let's have a further look at this. So the sound er is often spelled E R, I R, or U R. And you just kind of have to get used to which words do which. I just put them here in no particular order so you can see how they, um, how frequently they appear. So here's concern. <clears throat> Let me just grab a highlighter here. I do like a different color. Concern, here's our, here's the er sound here in concern. I'm not very good with this, am I? <clears throat> and then the next word is third, spelled I-R. See if I can do it better with this pen. Um, so third, that's not working, I third. <laughs> I'm gonna keep going, we'll keep trying. The next word is surface, here it is U-R for surface. And then in bird, we're back to I, R, er. If you listen, you really can't hear the difference between cern, erd, er, surface, bird. They all have the er sound, which is, remember this, these um, backward slash lines means this is the sound we're making. So in this case, we're making the er sound, which is spelled in the sound uh, vocabulary, E-R. Third, just like bird, is I, R. The third bird, nurse, here's a nurse in our picture, you are again, and curse, you are. Now, just as a little reminder, why is there an S at the end here? I mean, E, sorry. I kind of gave it away. Because the S, if it can't be out there by itself, then it looks like a plural or a third person um, um, uh, verb. <clears throat> so we want to put the E at the end there. And we put the E at the end here, of course, because the C can't be at the end. It would be surfac, which that's weird. So we put the E there to make the C say the S sound. And fern, E-R, and then turn, turn around and see who's behind you is U-R again. Okay? So that's the ER sound, and it is spelled three different ways. And you'll get used to which is which. Then we have the sound O-R, um, the OR sound. This is the sound OR at the beginning or middle of a word, typically. Sometimes it also comes at the end of the word if we're talking about a person who does a job, like doctor, actor, then it's an O-R, but then it sounds like er instead, doctor, actor. So it's interesting, it's spelled O-R, but it um, sounds like the previous slide of the er sound. Border, here's our O-R here in the middle of the word, border, and here's the er at the end. The most typical er sound at the end is the E-R, but we will figure that out um, as we go. Okay, and then orbit, here is our or at the beginning of the word. Orchid, the beautiful flower, or is at the beginning of the word. In the word sword, here's or in the middle of the word. And corn in the middle of the word, or, we have that or sound. Thorn, here it is in the middle of the word, and sworn in the middle of the word. So we have a lot of or um, spellings that just say or. And again, the R is influencing, it's uh, controlling the O. So here is another um, slide about or. The or sound at the end of a word is usually spelled O-R or O-R-E. <laughs> There's the word or right between. So for O-R, born, and there it is in the, um, in the middle, sworn in the middle, torn in the middle. And the reason I have or in the middle, I have these again, or two times in the middle, forlorn. And then the reason is you can see that most of the time, except for I'm going to get a 
uh, flowers for my mother. Um, we use O-R instead of O-R-E. Most of the time when we see or at the, hear or at the end of word, it's going to have an E at the end, like explore, more. This O-R-E doesn't really happen in the middle of the word. Store, chore, before. So, <clears throat> sorry, that went a little too quickly. Hopefully you got that. Let me just go back for a second. So you can see O-R-E for the end of the word, usually O-R in the middle of the word, but it can be in some cases just O-R at the end of the word. Okay, so then we have another R controlled, and that's A. The R sound is spelled A-R. This is probably the easiest one. It has the least other rules. So here's alarm with A-R in the middle. Barn, we can hear that really well, R. Yarn, party, R. Mark, A-R argue here it is at the beginning still a r argue artsy right and so that's r that's easy so here let's go through this week's words so the first one is serve the cafeteria will serve lunch at noon we've got the e r sound there the er spelling of er birth we have the e i r spelling at birth a baby elephant can weigh several hundred pounds Ber earth that's the er sound in the middle i r hurt you are. I hurt my arm in baseball practice. Hurt. After, here's the er at the end of the sound, at the end of the word. That's actually a sight syllable adding that too. I'm going to see you after my piano lesson. Oh, and then remember to spell by syllables. After, A-F, and then T-E-R. Remember that we often split our syllables between our consonants. Firm, she is firm about her decision to try out for the team. That's the IR firm about her. Here's er. This is a good way to remember er because you know how to spell her already. Okay, so more of this week's words. Return. Here's the er for return. He will return his library books tomorrow. Weather. Here we have the er sound at the end of the word. Um, she wondered whether her parents would let her stay up. Again, this is kind of a question word, so we see this WH. Hmm, I wonder whether my parents are going to let me stay up. WH, what, where, when, whether, which, all those start with WH. So that's one way to remember because it has a homophone, and that is the word weather. It still has the ER at the end, but it has that EA in the middle that's a short E, weather. What is the weather outside? Is it raining? Is it sunny? Sunny? Or is it snowing? What is the weather? This kind of weather versus this kind of weather? Mostly I can tell you to remember the WH comes when you're asking kind of a question -y thing like, I wonder whether his favorite ice cream is chocolate or Rocky Road. Whenever, again, starting with WH, because in some ways that's also asking or telling that question. Whenever my dog barks, whenever the doorbell rings, and here's our er sound at the end. Whenever is a compound word. Of course, it does have three syllables. Whenever, whenever, right? Better, we're going to do our syllable break right between the two T's. We've talked about that before. Better, he is much better at chess than his father is. Better. Aid, the nurse gave first aid to the accident victims. Aid is that long A-I sound, not at the end of the word, at the beginning or middle of the word. We spell A-I sometimes. The last set of words, center, here's our er sound here. Her brother always wants to be at the center of attention. Person, here's the er sound here. Person, the person who spilled the milk should clean it up. Person. Meet, we can meet after school and study for the quiz. Now, meet is spelled with our two E's to make the long E sound. The homophone for meet is spelled E-A. The way that I remember this is... Some people eat meat. Some people eat meat. Do you see? If you just put an M in front of the in front of eat, you'll have meat. And that's the way to remember that you wouldn't you would the eat and the meat are exactly the same except for the M comes in front of it, and eating meat is what some people do. America. Here's our er sound. Remember that we've capitalized our A because it's the proper name of a place. South America, we're going to cap capitalize both the S and the A. South America and Africa are separated by the, oh, here's another one, Atlantic, Ocean, and Africa. Three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five capitals there. 
and shoulder. She hung the purse over her shoulder. And there's our er, ending er. That's very common at the end of that one. Okay. All right. Now let's quickly look at your review words. Hopefully you got all of the, you got the spellings and the words written down from all of the um, new words, the 15 words that you have to put into your seesaw. And our review words will do during the activity. Reason. So wait, let me just remind you of the division. Re, long, R-E there. Long, that doesn't look very long. That doesn't look straight enough. Complete. This is our schwa sound. That's not a very good upside down E, is it? Complete. And this is um, E, consonant, silent E, right? Keep, spelt with a double E for making that long sound. Least, spelt with the EA version of the long E sound. Probably, here's prob. I know this is a short U here. I mean, short O, sorry. Probub, probably, right? Three syllables, probub, probably. Separate or separate comes in two. Remember that says two different things, separate and separate. Either or either, whichever way you say that. Either, either. We've got the er sound at the end. Away, this first A is a schwa spelled with an A. Long A is spelled A-Y at the end of a word, never A-I. Neither or neither, whichever you say, and the er sound at the end there. And a problem. Again, we're going to divide this right between the B and the L. Problem, problem. I can hear the a short O sound in the first syllable, and the second syllable becomes a schwa. Problem. Okay, that is it for, um, for today.